Hello everyone. Um, long time no see, right? <laughs> Been a little busy, haven't had time for videos. But there's one that's been on my mind for a while because a couple people have asked about it. It's a technique they wanted to see done and um, I haven't forgotten about it, just haven't had a chance to get around to it. And what it is, is on this page that I did in the um, Scout Guide, you know, it originally looked like this. And I kind of made this guy disappear so that I could put her here and he wouldn't show from behind. You know, because their little legs didn't match up just right. And, and you know, it would have been weird to just stick her down on top of there and have little parts of him showing through. So I, I disappeared him. <laughs> That's what I call it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to pick, I picked a real simple one. Let me show you. Um, and it doesn't, it's not easy. Like this one, if you wanted to make this guy disappear, this is going to be fussy because you have to like faux paint this background in there. I wouldn't even try. That would just be a nightmare. You know, the background that you are working with kind of determines how much of a pain this whole process is going to be. Something like this, it would be just a big pain. But, okay, like this one, this one would not be much of a pain at all if I make her disappear. And then I started thinking, do I really want to do that? Because I might like to put heads on these and she could just be like one of the models that I put a head on. Maybe that's what I'd, I'll do. I'll leave her body because, you know, she's like, it's like one of the models, and I'll just cut her head off. Let's do that. Let's just decapitate this lovely woman. Her name is Debbie. She is the owner of In Season Apparel, Fine Jewelry, and Gifts in Bentonville, Arkansas. And she is in the um, Volume 2 issue of the Scout Guide for Northwest Arkansas. And I've filmed some of these pages before that I've worked on and I've done some flip throughs. I'm just having a ball altering some of the pages in this book. Now to do this particular technique of making a person or part of a person or any foreground element disappear, you're going to need some acrylic craft paints and you're going to need some brushes probably kind of small these are kind of smallish just kind of depends on the area you're working with and I'm going to zoom in so you can get a good close-up look at what I'm doing okay first of all what I want to do is just kind of match the colors of the background so this one, I chose it because it's easy. It's kind of black and white. That's not like super black right there, but that is super white. And I'm thinking that probably my golden titanium white is gonna work fine. And what I usually do, did you even see that? I forgot I'm way up close. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit out on my craft mat. And then I'm gonna apply it with a kind of a wet paintbrush. Because I want to apply it thin, at least at first. And then I just want to kind of paint in where the background is. Just paint over the part of her that I want to eliminate have the background show through and if you want it to really blend in good you know it helps if you go around these other areas and add some paint too so that that doesn't look like this weird random painted piece that's for me that's kind of the trick in making this work and now over here and I said I wanted to keep her body because I think I'm going to make her like a um, 
one of the mannequins, but I don't want her arm. I'm gonna I'm gonna amputate this arm a little bit like that. And right there, see her fingers? Make those go away. And over here, I don't want any hair. So, I'll just do that. Now the black, I'm going to use some plain black acrylic craft paint, and I'm probably going to have to, well, I don't know if I'm going to have to tone it down. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get it to match this black. I probably can't, really. I may add a little bit of gray to it and see if that helps. Maybe this gray, let's see what happens if I do that. I'm just blending that black and that gray together to see if I can get this sort of soft black look. Doesn't have to be exact, but close is good. Oh, look at that. It's pretty darn close. Kind of hard to tell when it's wet because, you know, it looks like a shiny finish. But if I put a little on each one, <laughs> and if I could quit doing that, it would be great. Okay. I think that shade is close enough. So now I'm going to go in and remove her head. Anything that's flesh colored here with her shirt and all. Yeah, let's paint over that. Same thing here where her hand is. can still see her couple little fingers right on top of that shirt, but it kind of blends in with the pattern of the shirt, so I'm leaving it. And anything else? Black. Right down here where her pants are. I'm not really sure how far over to go. Let's just pretend like it's about right there. Okay. Cause yeah, she's wearing black pants, so we'll say that's where the line is. Now I'm gonna dip back into my white and clean up my perpetual boo boos. I'm not going for perfect here, you know. If I was, this, well. <laughs> I just wouldn't ever do it because <laughs> I don't think I could make it perfect. <laughs> you may have the skills required to make it perfect. I don't. Therefore, I'm not even going to try. Okay, I think that looks pretty good there. Except for the, now I need to go back into the black. Okay, it's like cutting your bangs, you know. Take a little more off the left. Ooh, wait, now a little more off the right. Oh, hold on, a little more off the left. <laughs> And then before you know it, you've got nothing left. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what this is like. Okay. Now I'm just going to be content with that because that's about the best I can do with that. Now I want to get rid of the rest of this hand down here. So I need to kind of try to match her shirt with that blue. Ugh. 
blues are hard. Let me see what I've got. I don't even know that I have a blue close to that color. This is a neon blue. I don't think that's going to work. I might have to go back into the room and see what blues I have that might be better. There's a phthalo blue. Way too bright. And I'll mix a little, I don't know why I'm mixing neon blue and with it I just feel like I should. And that is still way too bright. So let's add some black. Let me add some of that, the gray that I mixed up for the wall. I'm going to add that to my blue to tone it down. Why did it turn green? <laughs> totally turn green. That was really weird. <laughs> yeah, let me go get some other blues. Hang on. This might be what I need. This is a true blue. So, I'm going to add that to my mixture that turned green. Let's see if I can get it back to blue. I'm still a little bit green. It was probably the gray in that uh, black that made this turn green. Because grays usually have an undertone. It probably had a yellow undertone. It's still too green. Okay. Start over. Start with the true blue. And I'm going to add just a tiny dot of actual black that's not gray. This is just how it goes for me. It's just add stuff, keep adding, keep adding, and then eventually you'll hit a color that's kind of okay. And that's what I want. It's just kind of okay. That one's pretty good. I think maybe the problem I'm getting is that that blue... Here's a blue violet. I'm going to put it's kind of a purpley blue. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe that's why it's leaning more towards the green is because I need to add more. Oh yeah, that's what it needed. It needed more of a purpley blue. Now that's less green. Yep. I'm probably not ever going to be able to just match that blue color perfectly, but I don't need to. Not really. Because I just need to do, I've just made a, I'm going to, there we go. Made a mess up there with paint. Now let's see if this one is going to work because all I need to do is cover up her hand. It'll be okay. Especially if I just spread it around a little bit. I am happy with that. Now, to get rid of those fingers right there and maybe that magazine or book or whatever it is that she's got her hand on. I will need a brown. Okay. So let's try. Espresso might be too dark. Burnt umber might be too dark. Is that all I have for browns? Hmm. Let's try a little espresso. Oh, it's not really that dark. I think it needs yellow. So I'm going to try espresso with a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I did that. Here's, here's what I'm looking at. Because I'm looking at this, which, you know, it's brown, but it's warm. It has some yellow in it. So I squeezed out my brown, which I could see was a little bit darker than what I need. But I want to lighten it up with yellow to make it 
you know, closer to the color there. So that's all that I do is just kind of look at the color that I've got and see what color I need to add to it to make it um, closer to the color that I need. So let's put a little yellow and a little of our brown. Oh, see, I can already tell that's probably going to be just about right. I think that's what we needed. Yep. So see if you can't just exactly match your color, then you just kind of repaint the whole... Oh, you didn't see any of that. <laughs> If you can't exactly match the color, you just kind of repaint the whole area to fit what you can. Alrighty, now our lady is, for all intents and purposes, gone. We disappeared her, right? Now, that is how you eliminate some foreground elements or bring the background to the foreground. I don't know. Whatever you call it. That's how you disappear someone. Like the mafia. Don't they disappear people? I think they do. See, we just disappeared her. And now I am even more certain than before that I want to put heads <laughs> on these mannequins and on her too. <laughs> I could totally probably have just, you know, pasted a head on top of her, but then I wouldn't have been able to show you the technique. <laughs> so I need one, two, three, four, five, six heads. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a problem. Let's see what we've got for heads. Like she might be just about the right size. I might use her. Now, do I want vintage heads like this or do I want modern? Do I know what I want? Look at these little girls. Do I see another one up here. funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Is this going to work all the way across? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm going to go look for more of those heads. I'll be back. Okay, I printed out my little girls I'm going to use for my heads here. And there just happened to be six of them. So, yeah, it was meant to be. Uh... I've got, okay, see I've trimmed her neck so she'll fit right there, and some of them I can trim their necks just right to fit in, but you know, like that one, that I don't think I'm going to be able to, I don't know, let's get in your neck. So yeah, I'm just going to trim their little necks to fit on the mannequins, and then glue them down, and then I'll come back and show you that this will take some time to kind of fussy cut. Okay, I got my little girls all decapitated and <laughs> reattached to bodies and I think they just look fabulous. And see because we um, blotted out her head, you know, I, she had the brown hair right here, that doesn't show. So she really looks like she's just another one of the mannequins, right? And I just kind of got carried away with the whole, you know, vintage head thing going on and started looking for other stuff. Y'all, look what I found. 
Okay, this doesn't have anything to do with anything. I don't even know what Explorer has to do with this, but it fits beautifully right here, so I'm gonna put it there. So that's gonna kind of be our new little label going on here. And then there's the suitcase here. I just happen to have this little, I don't know if it's a suitcase or a box or a trunk, that's just the right size to go there. I can put it over there. And then this was the center of a cigar band, which just looks like a little piece of wall art for right there. And this little um, flower bouquet thing covers that nicely. So that'll be perfect. And then I've even got this little vintage, uh, what's it say, sachet bottle jar thing that I think would be perfect there. And then the one that I love, I had this lamp. This is all just out of my stash. You know, stuff I've been hoarding. This little vintage looking lamp solves the problem of this girl whose body is behind the lamp, but her head is in front of the lamp. And I was just gonna be okay with that <laughs> until I found this lamp, which just fits perfectly right there and solves the perspective issue. Yes, it covers up her face a little, but she is behind the lamp. Her body's behind the lamp. So, you know, that's just where it goes. But look, those were all just from my stash. So I'm gonna glue these down and then we're, we're just gonna have this whole little page you know, made more fun. Okay. Ah, cute. <laughs> now, our little store here looks like a little vintage shop, does it not? I think it does. Oh, that was so fun. I could just do that all day long. I love altering these pictures like this. Okay, all right, so I think that's all I have. I just wanted to show y'all how to um, do the little, you know, disappearing someone, and then you can see how that can work to your advantage if you put something over it. You don't have weird stuff showing through. And that is all for today. The end.